Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to focus on how to install Wireshark on our CentOS installation. This video is part of a larger series of videos that focuses on how to use CentOS as a virtual machine utilizing Oracle VirtualBox. Now, it is not required that you are using CentOS as a virtual machine, but in this particular case, I'm going to be referencing a second private network that we have installed. The idea here is with Wireshark is that we can download and install and ultimately run Wireshark to be able to monitor the traffic on our private network, the private network that we have set up between our virtual machines. And so to begin with, the first thing that you want to do is log in as your user level account that you have set up to work with sudo. And so I'm going to be doing most of this from the command line first in this user level account utilizing sudo. And then we are going to jump over to the root account to make one change to this account to give it some additional permissions. And we're also going to be using a different package manager. So to begin with, what we want to do as we want to do periodically is we simply want to check to see if there are any additional packages or updates available for our operating system. So in order to do this, we simply go ahead and run sudo yum and then dash y to accept any updates and update. Now we're going to be prompted, at least for this first time, with the password for our account in order to be able to use sudo. And since I've done this pretty often and I get into the habit of checking for updates on my virtual machine, I have nothing to do. Now, that's the first step and I encourage you to do that uh, periodically, particularly if your virtual machine sits for a long time and you, and or possibly you are using an older installation of CentOS, just to make sure that you've all the recent packages before you attempt to make some changes. Now, the second thing that we're going to do in this video is we're going to be focusing on a different package manager, the DNF package manager, which stands for the Dandified Yum package manager. It's an, essentially an extension or an improvement over the Yum or Yellow Dog Updater modified package manager. And both of them leverage the RPM packages or the Red Hat package manager packages. So the idea here is that we're going to use a command line tool then to install Wireshark. And so the first thing that you want to do is you simply look at the help for DNF and you'll notice that if you've ran the help for YUM, you'll see that many of the switches are pretty similar. I mean, it's the same fundamental concept. And you'll also see that, for instance, you can actually pass the dash Y to suppress any prompts, much like we do in our YUM package manager. Now, the idea here is then that we're going to use sudo DNF. Um, I'm going to skip over the dash Y because since this is the first time I've installed Wireshark on this machine and probably the first time that you have installed um, Wireshark, be good for us to look at the list of packages that is going to be attempted to be downloaded. And then we simply specify our install and then the name of the package that we wish to install. In this particular case, it's Wireshark. And you'll see that the first thing that happens is it downloads the list of dependencies that we need in order to be able to install and run Wireshark. And particularly interesting to us is the fact that in addition to Wireshark, you also notice that you get a Wireshark client. And so optionally, you could download that part separately, but we want both the UI and the client. And again, you'll notice here that you're getting this prompt asking if this is okay. Assume it is, so we go ahead and press Y. And it's going to download the package, base package that we requested, as well as any dependencies that may go along with it. Now, fortunately, this one won't take too terribly long. Um, and so what we'll do here is we'll just watch the packages go by. Um, you'll notice that all of them have the .rpm file extension. Again, that is the Red Hat Package Manager file extension. Both, you, uh, excuse me, both YUM and DNF essentially are just improvements on that same principle. Again, leveraging different repositories. In some cases, you'll find that only certain pieces of software are available 
on one of their repos or the other. In other words, you may only be able to use YUM to get certain software and DNF to get others. And at this point, then after we've downloaded all the packages, it verifies them and then it installs each of them. And again, this one goes pretty quickly. And in just a second, this should be finished. Essentially, you can see the script that's running. And we can verify by simply running Wireshark now, and we will pass to it dash dash version. Now, you can do this with many Linux applications um, to be able to verify, number one, that it's installed, and then also verify the version. And you'll see that for the making of this video right here that I have Wireshark 3.4.10. Now, again, if you don't have that exact version, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you're watching this video in the future, you probably have a, a more current version. But then what we want to do is we want to see the behavior to understand why we need to log into root to make a modification to our, in this case, G Myers account or the account that you are using. So this time what I wanna do is I run, wanna run Wireshark without the dash dash version. And we can do this actually a number of different ways. We can do it from the terminal. We can also do it if you come up here to your activities and you go to your applications, or if you notice that there's this now newly added fin here, if you're already running it. But uh, in this case, you'll see that my Wireshark is listed under my applications. Now I have this installed on my server, whether you install this on your client and your server or, or your server, it doesn't really matter. Uh, for future videos, we're going to need Wireshark on the server because we we'll want to capture some traffic as it comes from our client. But the other thing you'll notice here is that I do not have any network adapters listed or any useful network adapters listed. And so what we can do to understand the problem is we'll open another tab in terminal. I'm gonna run my if config command and you'll see that I should have additional adapters. I'm not gonna focus on the loopback adapter because that will be there no matter what, but we should have, in this case, two adapters. Why do we have two adapters? Well, because in an earlier video, we actually added a second adapter in our Oracle virtual machine. The first adapter was used to NAT to either uh, leverage your wireless or your internet access on your ethernet card. Um, the second adapter, we are going to bridge in later videos, but for right now, this is the adapter that we're going to leverage communication between our virtual clients. In other words, our virtual client and our virtual server or any of our virtual machines. Again, this is video specific to utilizing virtual machines, but again, the principles are the same for a physical host as well. But the problem is that we don't actually see them. And so what we have to do is we have to give permissions to the G Myers account that will allow for you to run Wireshark. Now, in order to do this, we can close out the applications. And what we're going to do is we're gonna log in temporarily as root. So you log off of your non-admin account. And at the prompt, in just a second, you'll see that we have the opportunity to select not listed, which then allows for us to log in with the root account and the root password. And what we're going to do is we're going to add that account, the one that you commonly use, in this case, my G Myers, to a group that will then be allowed to bind Wireshark to those network interfaces. And so in just a second, when we get access to our terminal, we're gonna run a simple command here. Remember that you do not always wanna be logged on as root. So we have to do this. We're going to simply mod the user. So user mod, we want to add or append rather to the group Wireshark. And we want to add G Myers. Now, regrettably, user mod is one of the examples of these functions, applications in Linux that don't give you positive confirmation. It only tells you when you've done something wrong. So at this point, it appears as if we've done it correctly. Uh, generally speaking, as long as you type the group name and the username uh, correctly, it should be fine. And then the easiest way to check is again, just simply log out. 
and then log back in as that non-privileged or non-root account. So in this case, I'm gonna go back in as my G Myers. And now I'm gonna again launch my terminal. I'm going to go ahead and run Wireshark again from the terminal. We could also do it from the applications. But the difference being, and just to confirm, we will open up another terminal window. If I type in I if config rather, if config, you will see that I now have additional interfaces with which to bind to in Wireshark. And specifically, you'll notice that I have this first adapter, which is natted to, again, either your wireless or your Ethernet card on your host machine, as well as the second adapter that we are using to connect between our virtual machines. The other thing to note real quick before we leave this terminal is that you have a statically assigned IP address for that second adapter. This will come in play in just a second. Um, and so at this point, then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and select that second adapter because that's the one that we're hoping to see some communication on. Um, if you go ahead and launch Wireshark now, uh, focusing or filtering rather on that second adapter, you'll see there's not really a lot going on. And that is because we don't have any other machines currently doing anything on the network or specifically currently doing anything on our private network. Well, that means that you simply have to come over and now launch your other virtual machine. Now, whether it's your client or another server, second client, doesn't really matter. Um, in this case, I'm just running another CentOS installation. Um, I'm gonna go here again to my activities. I'm gonna go ahead and launch a terminal. And much like in the first instance of CentOS, I want to get familiar with my environment. So I'm going to run my if config, and you'll see that I also have a couple of network adapters in addition to the loopback adapter. And you'll see here that again, I have that natted adapter as well as the second adapter then that has a similar IP address. So if you remember, just a few seconds ago, it was 2.100 for the first machine, and this one is 2.99 for the second. Now, the specifics of the IP address don't really matter. Uh, the idea is that they are both on the same subnet. They both share the same subnet mask. In this case, it's going to be 255.255.255.0, and that's just to make routing a little easier between the various virtual machines. Now, I'm going to take just a second here to try to split my screen so that it's a little easier to see. And you can already see that there is very, very, very minimal traffic on this network. And we'll come back to in later videos when we run Wireshark, uh, what types of traffic you will see. But for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully try to get both my terminal and Wireshark so that we can see exactly what's going on. And what I'd like to do then is I would like to simply ping from one of the virtual machines to the other. In this case, I'm going to start by pinging from the first machine, the one with Wireshark installed on it, to the second machine. In other words, I'm going to ping the second machine, and I want to see the type of traffic that I will be receiving in Wireshark. So we'll start off with pinging 192.168.2.99. And again, where am I getting that from? Well, that's just simply from the if config in the second virtual machine. And remember that in Linux, it will continue to ping until you stop it. And you'll see now I have a whole bunch of ICMP echo requests followed by replies. And so you can actually stop this if you want to, or we can just simply stop the ping. And you'll see that I am making the request to or of, if you want to think of it like that. In other words, I'm asking, is 2.99 alive? That is my echo request. And 2.100 is in fact, or excuse me, rather 2.99 is in fact replying. It's a little hard because this 
is a little small on this screen here, but you can see here that 2.99 is in fact replying. And so that's a good sign. It means that number one, that the two virtual machines can communicate, but number two, that we have Wireshark correctly installed and bound to the correct adapter. Now, let's go ahead and see a little more traffic here. Uh, that was accidental right there as far as the search. We'll come back to that. Um, that was a poorly timed, I guess you could say. Um, in this case, what I'd like to do is I would like to, from the client, simply ping our server. And again, where did I get that from? Well, it just turns out that our server, or my server rather, is 2.100. So I'm going to ping from 2.99 to 2.100. And again, you can see here, if you've got your Wireshark capture running, that now suddenly you have a bunch more traffic. And again, we're going to get some additional traffic on this private network uh, as we start seeing more hosts and more services. Uh, we'll come back to the different types of traffic here. For instance, you'll see an ARP request that asks for an update to our address resolution protocol table or ARP table. And you can see that what it's doing here is it's asking who has 2.100 when I start pinging. So again, this is your opportunity to do a couple of things, verify your connectivity between your two virtual machines, but also to make sure that Wireshark is working correctly. And in the future, what we're going to do is we're going to capture specific types of traffic above and beyond our ICMP echo requests. So as always, hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And thank you for watching.